Hello, I'm Natalie Kunzman, MD, and today I am talking about psoriasis per request from one of our viewers and a true psoriasis warrior. I'm going to do this in at least two parts, so consider this part one. And this is near and dear to me because I have had this condition for the past 30 years. So again, to keep the topic manageable, it'll be in series and one series alone, I want to focus on the dietary strategies. This will be everything but the dietary strategies and we'll just be scratching the surface because this is a big topic. So this disease in my mind seems to be very smart and elusive for a lot of us. Now it is inflammatory and still with our understanding, we are classifying it as an autoimmune disease. So. As a reminder, skin is a detoxing organ and it works in conjunction with the liver and the kidney and gut detoxification. And just for instance, where the skin is concerned, we detox daily with perspiration. Now we have a highly complex immune system internally and literally within the skin layers. Now we propose that there is a or several toxins that will alter this immune system to not recognize itself and see some of the presenters that the dendrites are bringing as a foreigner. And then in regard to that, we'll start bringing lymphocytes to the area of the skin. Now, there are many tests to go looking for these toxins so we really should go after that and take the integrative approach to do that. So again, as a reminder, the dendritic cells in the skin will present these antigens or toxins to those T cells. Now, those activated T cells will recruit more T cells. And then those T cells will start secreting cytokines, which are protein messengers, and continue a cycle of fighting, which kind of reminds me of like spray guns and uh, ammunition, which will increase the vasculature into the skin, which will be the redness of the skin. And then it will cause those skin cells to reproduce much more quickly than the average person who doesn't have this disease. And then this also will correspond to the thickness that you see in psoriasis. Now, many of the biologics, which are the injectables or the infusions, are working at the cytokine level to stop this vicious cycle at the skin level. Some of the other medications that have been out on the market a long time and prior to the biologics are either just trying to suppress the T cells themselves or the immune system and block in the first place. Now, there is always the genetic predisposition to most illnesses, but epigenetics influence is far more compelling and contributing to the disease. So these are talking about our lifestyle pieces, such as stopping smoking. Reminder, tobacco is a nightshade. We'll get into that at the second part of the series. We need exercise sleep and as a reminder growth hormone and repair goes on in this phase and low stress remember that cortisol will affect many parts of the immune system so all of those lifestyle pieces matter now the integrative approach is always trying to find the elusive event or trigger that primes that t cell in the first place the integrative approach may go after the environmental triggers, which might be some PVCs and heavy metals and solvents and pesticides. We can test these. Some of the integrative approach is just simply going after to enhance the immune system or quieting of the immune system at the global level. Now, Again, these will not be all inclusive. I'm sure there's other uh, remedies and integrative approaches, but the salient ones, one for instance, is optimizing vitamin D. So vitamin D 
is one of those global ways to affect and regulate the immune system. And for those of you that have gotten some prescription topicals, some of those are vitamin D derivatives and they work particularly good at slowing down the plaque thickness. Now, as a reminder, back to the biologics, some of the TNF alpha blockers can deplete vitamin D, so please keep that in mind. Colostrum. This is a wonderful strategy and ability to aid healing in the leaky gut, but it also will go after some progenitor factors as well. To consider the Ayurvedic herbal regimen, they will use combinations of a black nightshade juice. They may go after garlic and onions to purify the blood. Sometimes a jasmine flower paste can actually relieve the itching and reduce the inflammation. Google lipids are used a lot to reduce the inflammation. Neem and neem oil can boost the immune system and purify the blood. It's got a funny smell to it, so you have to be careful. Turmeric, which I have talked about in multiple of my conversations, can reduce inflammation, redness, and some of that swelling and thickness of the skin. Boswellia, which is also the frankincense from India, can reduce inflammation and support the immune system. Okay, here's some others you may not have heard of, but are starting to get a lot of research and momentum since a lot of people just want to avoid medications. Ozone therapy is researching underway, and a lot of that would be more so of the blood ozone therapies. And ozone, as a reminder, is a three oxygen molecule, which is a supercharged oxygenation strategy. CBD. Now let's talk a little bit about the nitty gritty details about the CBD oil from, coming from the cannabis plant. It's being heavily researched as an immune modulator. And that immune modulator suppresses IL-2, which is one of the interleukins, interferon gamma, interferon gamma, activator protein one, and nuclear factor of those activated T cells. So you can imagine the potential of CBD in this disease process. The CBD itself will also slow down the keratinocyte overgrowth. It will also help CD4 and CD8 to go through cellular death. Now, it also will help suppress VEGF and MMP and those inflammatory mediators, and those are what are going after some of the hypervasculature areas of the skin, creating all the redness and the swelling. CBD also suppresses NF-kappa B, important in viral and T cell mediated illnesses. We cannot forget energy systems to treat this disease. And I think a lot of you will understand when I talk about UVA, excuse me, UVB treatments to irradiate the skin such that you're going under the UVB lights to help with the skin. That's an energetic fix. That is not a chemical fix. There's also total body wellness, especially to quiet the stress response and to improve the sleep with pulsed EMF. Now, some of the more aggressive and newer areas being researched are some of the frequency machines that are built off of the Tesla and Rife principles. And these generators can literally generate all kinds of ranges of frequencies which are measured in cycles per second. So as an example, very high Vibrational frequencies such as 10, 15, and 20K can actually kill and vibrate to kill cancer cells. Now, back in the very early years, these scientists were interested in killing bacteria and viruses and fungi and would send different frequencies to the culture medium with those bacteria or critters and watch them under the microscope. 
Now this was done over and over and over with meticulous record keeping to see what frequencies immobilized or killed those said bacteria. So as time went on, so many disease states were measured with animals and humans and found to have certain frequencies that will either fix, cure, or treat conditions. And again, as a reminder, we are vibratory beings down to the DNA level where biophotons are being emitted. So we are not just protoplasm and chemistry. We are vibrational. So locking into some of the vibrational strategies to aid with our immune system, I think is the key of the future. So another one is LED light with red light at 633 nanometers. And it's also being researched with near infrared light, which is 830 nanometers. And there are some generators that are combining those two red frequencies together. And they are finding that psoriasis patients are getting anywhere from 60 to 100% clear just with LED lighting. A quick vote or quick mention about biofield tuning and acupuncture, which is also trying to go to some root metaphysical cause and um, root cause and calming the immune system. And while we are talking about any underlying spiritual or religious or metaphysical underpinnings of psoriasis, there are a few schools of thought. One is having excess high expectations of yourself is very detrimental to the immune system and self-criticism can be considered a trigger of psoriasis and I can vouch that if I am in the throes of this mindset, my psoriasis is worse. And again, psoriasis flaring can cause depression and the cycle feeds itself. One more metaphysical concept to the contribution to psoriasis is some of the metaphysical practitioners believe that it could revolve around a fear of being hurt or deadening the senses to the self, refusing to accept responsibility for your own feelings. Sometimes it's considered an unwillingness to face something or believing that you are not worthy of love or living. Sometimes it revolves around wanting to please a parent and no matter what the child does, you can't get appreciation from the parents and you may feel deep shame or guilt about that. And the skin, uh, psoriasis is covering up the skin as a mask. So there you have it, some salient new thoughts and adjunctive treatments to potentially your medical regimen in a traditional setting and improving other strategies in an integrative approach. Again, part two will focus on food itself. Again, I'm Natalie Kunzman, MD. Subscribe to my channel below. And until we meet again, be well.